Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin and today I would like to revisit a series I've been doing on this channel for about a year. Now in the most recent versions of this video, I've gotten a little bit of blowback because people are like, this isn't budget anymore and then of course the other side saying like, hey do a $2,000 carry. Slow your roll, <laughs> slow your roll a little bit. I'm not made of money, but also um, budget has multiple meanings. In this sense, I'm saying with a budget of $500, this is an example of what you could get. It's not saying this is all budget gear. It's not, there's none of this. Well, some of it is actually budget gear, but this is not meant to be a budget video, like all budget gear, it's meant to be a video on a specific budget. So with this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Rather than giving Amazon or eBay or Walmart or any other company my money, I wanted to give back to the community a little bit. So I put some money back into the community, but I also wanted to promote buying used gear. That is something that so many people overlook. Some of the stuff obviously has some use marks, but others honestly <laughs> looks brand new. And that's kind of the thing about the EDC community. A lot of people buy stuff, take some pretty pictures, but they don't really use it a ton. So for people like me who like to buy things used, that's, that's a great thing. You know, you can buy stuff used and it still looks new. So that's what we're talking about today. I'm going to talk about this carry, what it cost me and what it would have cost if I bought it new. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. But before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Surfshark. Now, as many of you know, when you're looking for a new watch or a new knife, there are many websites out there that will take your information without you even knowing it. And then later you'll maybe sign on to Facebook or open up another web page, and boom, there's that exact model you were looking at. Using Surfshark VPN, you can stop websites from tracking your information and selling targeted ads to you. And with Surfshark's HackLock ID protection, you'll get an alert if someone tries to break into your email. You can also use it from all of your devices, whether you have an iPhone, an Android phone, a Windows computer, a Mac, whatever you're using, you can use it from all of those devices at the same time, which is something you don't get with a lot of other VPN services. But one of my favorite features of Surfshark is that you can see content not available in your area. So if you're tired of seeing this, or or not being able to watch Netflix shows that aren't available in your country, choose a server in a different country and you can see all the content that's been made unavailable where you live. So if you wanna support this channel and get protection and freedom online, just click the link in the description down below and use coupon code Taylor Martin. It not only gives you 85% off the regular price, but also three months of service totally free. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk for trying it out. And thanks again, Surfshark, for making this video possible. To be completely transparent, this is not all stuff that I would personally buy, and that is one point that I wanna make when buying used gear. You have to choose from what's available. You can't select what you're buying all the time. You have to wait for something to become available, and sometimes you're not buying exactly what you want, but that's okay because when you're buying used gear, you're not really losing as much value as the original owner. It's kind of like buying a car, the uh, depreciation happens with that first owner usually. Sometimes there's actually appreciation in EDC gear, but you can take this gear that you buy and then sell it later and or trade later. You can just kind of move through gear to get where you eventually want. That's what I did with watches. I bought a bunch of different watches to just kind of see where my tastes led me and I eventually sold most of those off and bought this one watch, which I will talk about soon. But that's just kind of how this EDC game has worked for me. I just buy something I like, decide maybe this isn't exactly what I was after, I sell it and then end up buying something I like a little better. And then if I don't love it, I end up just trading it or selling it and, and just moving through. And a lot of us in the Discord server have actually been doing this a lot, just flipping gear, flipping gear, not flipping for profit, but flipping to get to where we eventually wanna be. If you are buying used gear and you're going this route, you're gonna get more bang for your buck, but also you have slim picking sometimes. So there's a little bit of give and take from both sides. So to get this kicked off, I wanna start with probably the best bang for the buck on the table. And that's not gonna be for everybody, but that is the watch. So this is, I think, one of the best bang for your buck watches out there. I think a lot of people will agree for that. It's the Orient Ray 2. The Mako 2 is also a really good watch for the price. Originally, it's about $120, $130, depending on the colorway. There are a lot of different options. It has an in-house movement from Orient and it's just a really solid dive watch for $120, $130. The only other thing you're gonna get in this realm is maybe like a Seiko 5, but this is just a really, really good watch. You get a screw down crown, a fairly nice bracelet, a unidirectional 120 click bezel, 
a day date complication. It is an automatic. It does have a mineral crystal, which is one of the biggest complaints, but I mean, it's $120, $130. What do you expect? Um, there is a solid case back, this double lock clasp. It's got a lot going for it. Um, the loom on it is really, really great. I like the watch, but it's not exactly what I would go for. This is actually something I was seeking out for this video and for another video I wanna make. So I did buy this watch with a purpose, but for me and my own personal collection, I probably wouldn't go with this watch. One of the biggest things for me is how rattly the bracelet is. So it, it is a, a cheaper bracelet and that's fine, but it's not the bracelet itself that's so rattly. It's the end links that are super, super they sound very hollow and they rattle a lot when it's on the wrist. Other than that, I really don't have a single complaint about this watch. To note, I did buy this used obviously for 80 bucks, mind you, $80. And it's still in great condition. There are a couple of scratches on the mineral crystal, which is fine to be completely honest. It, this would be a beater watch for me. So I have not been wearing this watch. This is actually, I think the only thing that I purchased from the server that I've not been wearing every single day. And uh, that's just because it is a little rattly. It's it's not my favorite watch, but see that? It's just got that, it's not flopping around my, on my wrist. It's just a little loose in the end links. And that's where that rattle comes from. See, it's, it's pretty tight on my wrist. So just a couple of more things to note. It's a 41 and a half millimeter diameter, as well as 13 millimeter thickness. And you have 200 meters of water resistance. You can see it right there on the dial. Really, really solid watch for just 80 bucks. Next, let's talk about the wallet. This is the Das Affinimer Top Sider. And I just recently did a wallet video talking about my favorite minimalist wallets. And if I had bought this wallet a week earlier, this would have totally replaced the gun deck from Das Affinimer on that list. I love the gun deck. I've carried it more than any wallet probably ever but this one is just a little better. The difference is the gun deck is horizontal and opens vertically as well. This one is a vertical wallet and opens vertically. So your cash can go right here and fold over with this flap. Very, very similar construction, just different orientation. And I much prefer this one to that one. Uh, just rides a little better in the pocket. Pretty much the exact same setup I had. This is a chestnut leather and white stitching. My stitching on my gun deck is red. I paid 45 bucks for this. This is $55 new. So the guy I purchased this from in the server literally received this wallet that day, turned around, packed it up and shipped it to me. What a guy. He offered this to me and I was like, wow, you, <laughs> you bought it and you don't even, you're not even gonna get to use it. And he said, it's okay. I already have five Dossel Phantom Air wallets. So I don't feel too bad getting this one from him. He sold it to me for what he paid, $45 shipped. Honestly, cannot complain about that either. So really good buy there. Um, even at full price, still a fantastic wallet. I think this was the very first item that was sold to me, uh, that was even offered to me actually when I came up with this idea. I was gonna do the Amazon video and then I was like, how can I make it interesting? And uh, this just sort of naturally happened. I was talking with a few different people about it and I decided let's do it in the server. And this was one of the first items that was offered to me. I wanted to feel out just a little bit to see what else I could shake loose as far as pins go, because I already had a tech liner in the super shorty version in brass, but this is the TI2 Designs tech liner shorty in titanium. These run about $80, so I paid 65 instead of 80, so got a little bit of money off there. And it is this really nice little neodymium magnet design where you have a magnetized cap. It takes a Pilot G2, I don't remember exactly what came in it, I think a Sino from Uniball, was the refill inside, uh, but you can remove some of those spacers that come inside it, use the spring from a Pilot G2 pin, as well as the, the magnet that comes in it, and you can put a Pilot G2 refill in here. I have a, a fine refill from Pilot in here, which I, I'm really thrilled about. That's probably one of my favorite refills in this length. You do have this weird little gap where the tip doesn't come all the way down to the, the refill, and that was actually explained to me. I talked about the brass version of this that I got before in a video, and people explained to me that the reason for that is because you can actually put this right up against a scale or a ruler and make a line without the tip of the pin interfering with where the refill is. These are just super, super fidgety. They take a good amount of refills. The biggest complaint I have about these is that they are magnetized. So if you're wearing a an automatic watch that doesn't have anti-mag, you can run the risk of magnetizing your watch. 
Also, it sticks to everything, literally everything. I've had this be pulled out of my pocket and stuck to something. When I come back, I notice it's just kind of sticking out from wherever I was sitting. Um, that, and it, it just picks everything up. So it doesn't have its drawbacks, but it's a super, super fidgety pin. It's so easy to just sit here and do this forever. I didn't want to buy a tactile turn or an urban survival bolt action pin because I've had all of those. I wanted something I hadn't had. And while I did have the super shorty and the tech liner, uh, I don't necessarily love the super shorty because it's almost too short, but this is a really great size. Happy to pick that one up. 65 bucks. Really good buy. Let's talk about keys for a minute. So fun fact, a little update on me. I no longer carry keys. I have a truck fob that I keep in my pocket. I don't ever touch it. That is all the keys that I really have. This thing stays in my truck, so I don't actually carry this every day. I have it with me every day, but it's not part of my carry. It goes in the truck. When I come here, I grab it, I unlock the door, it goes on the wall, and when I leave, I get back in the truck and it stays there. It never comes out of the truck or this office. These are the only two places this key set ever goes. So it's not technically part of my EDC anymore, but I do have it attached to this. So this is a Coke Tools clasp beaner which normally these are about a hundred bucks. Uh, this was sold to me for 50 in the server. It's a titanium, all titanium, 100% titanium carabiner. So this is a titanium gate and all titanium body for this carabiner. Both of them are stone washed and you have a little bit of a cap lifter here and then two separate rings for attaching things to it. And then we have a key bar junior. This is the aluminum version in the bomber style, I guess. Uh, it'll hold three keys pretty comfortably. Well, not comfortably. That's its limit really is three keys. And then I have some tweezers. These I did not buy in the server, just full disclosure. I had these from the key bar video I made. I have a set of tweezers in here and a little uh, key rubiner, I guess is what <laughs> key bar calls it. Uh, super compact. The reason I have the key rubiner on here is because the little uh, attachment that comes with the key bar junior is just one of those little metal holes. And I couldn't attach it this without some other thing that's going to elongate it. So technically I could just carry this in my pocket and I'd be totally fine. Or I could clip this to my belt loop and I'd be totally fine. But I really wanted the Coke Tools clasp beaner. So I bought this for 50. I don't know what the Keybar Junior runs originally. I think it's 20 or 25. I picked this one up for 15 bucks. So $65 for these two items right here. Really saw that. I love how minimal this key bar junior is. Now I did want a multi-tool and originally I set out to get some sort of Swiss Army knife, but then I changed my mind because I have all the Swiss Army knives I want. Like I have so many different Swiss Army knives now. So I wanted another Leatherman tool. And for the longest time, I've actually carried the Leatherman Micra. I, I love the Micra. It's got a really great tool set, but this was what I really wanted, which is the Leatherman squirt. So I had a few people offering to me Leatherman style CS and PS versions. And while those are compact and pretty nice, they didn't have quite the tool set I wanted. There was no other Leatherman that was really small and compact that has pliers, scissors, a file, flathead, and Phillips, except for the Leatherman Squirt PS4. So these are actually fairly expensive for a tiny, tiny multi-tool. This was $35. I paid 35 because again, full disclosure, John Smith offered a style PS to me, I believe. And I was like, I know you got a Squirt PS4. Why don't you sell me your Squirt PS4? And he was like, what, do, what will you pay? And I said, what do they cost? He said 35 and I said, I'll pay you 35. I had enough room in the $500 budget. I was like, I'll pay full price for a Squirt PS4. Um, I probably could have bought something different, but this was one that I actually wanted for my collection. So I bought it anyway. Uh, but you do have a metal and wood file here. You have a mini blade, which we'll probably never use. It is chisel ground, which is also pretty interesting. You have a tiny set of scissors right here. You have a couple of multiple use tools over here. This is a tiny flathead or a Phillips. And then you have another flathead as well as a bottle opener. And then in the inside you have spring pliers, which they count this as three tools. You have needle nose, regular pliers, and wire cutters. Really, really compact tool with a ton of different tools in it. And I, I think this is one that I will probably keep in my collection, the Squirt PS4, just a really cool tool. It doesn't disappear in the pockets unless you're carrying it in the fifth pocket, then it's like it's not even there. And when you can have this many tools in a tool that just disappears in your pocket, I think that's really, really great. So Squirt PS4, recommend it hands down, new or used, buy one, have one in your collection. 
It's a great tool. This is the Raylite Dawn Ti. This configuration originally was $165 because it is the uh, it is not the Nachia version, which is what I wanted. If it was the Nachia version, I probably would have been a little more happy with it. Nachia is a little warmer. It's not quite as bright, but this one is 3000 lumens. I can't remember exactly what emitter it has in there, but it is a cool white. Not exactly my favorite for a flashlight, but what you do get, and one of the reasons this was 165 instead of 150, is the glow gasket inside. You may be, there you go, you can see the glow gasket right there glowing a little green. Sure, I think every flashlight should have a glow gasket, to be completely honest. But this is, like I said, an 18650 flashlight, so I have a Samsung 30Q battery in here. But what's cool about this, while this is a really big flashlight, can make it a little smaller because then actually come without this, well, they come with this tube, but it's originally intended to be an 18350 battery instead of an 18650. So if you have an 18350 cell on you, you can make this a shorter flashlight, much shorter. You do lose a lot of your output, but it is much more compact, much lighter, and it works the same way. So much smaller, much more compact, much more tolerable size flashlight for everyday carry. Another thing to note about the Raylite Dawn is that all around the bezel here, you have 12 tritium slots. And then on the tail switch, which is titanium, really nice tail switch, really nice click action. Um, you have two slots for tritium vials in the tail. I don't have any tritium for it. I don't know that I'll buy any for this one because I would much prefer to have the Nachia emitter, but I could take this one and trade it for a different flashlight. And that's one of the reasons I just went ahead and bought it is these are really nice, really, really nice flashlights. Um, so I'm not losing out buying it. I got it for a really good price. I'm happy both ways. All right, let's talk about the one you guys probably wanted to see the most, and that is the knife. I got the Ferrum Forge Falcon, which is a mass drop collaboration, a we produced knife, and honestly, brand new. These things are ridiculously good value. The stuff from Ferrum Forge is just fantastic value, especially their mass drop collaborations or drop collaborations. They're all manufactured by Wii. They are affordable, most importantly. This is a titanium frame lock on bearings. It's a flipper knife with a thumb hole, which you can also spidey flick. It's a drop point, 2.9 inch blade. You got a saber grind with a harpoon swedge or sort of a harpoon swedge. Oh, and a milled titanium clip. So you get all the stuff that you want in a knife, really, right? Like all the stuff that I would want in a knife. $100 new, $100 new. You can get them on drop right now for $100. This one I paid 90 for because it was pretty much brand new in box. All these marks on here that you might see, these snail trails, they're from me because I've been carrying and flipping the crap out of this knife all week because the action is great. The centering, perfectly centered. This knife is actually damn near perfect and it was $90. S35VN blade steel, like I don't know of a better value knife at 90 to $100. There may be a few, but it's slim pickings at $100 that are gonna be better than the Ferrum Forge Falcon. It is a little aggressive on the design. It is not the most gentlemanly knife, uh, but the ergonomics, dude, this fits my hand like a glove. That dip for the thumb right there, the jimping, if you want a little more aggressive grip or a tighter grip, this thing just melts into your hand when you use that finger choil. And frankly, I think this is a phenomenal knife. I was eyeing the Falcon for a very long time because it's just a really cool knife. It's a little aggressive for me now. I think my tastes have toned down quite a bit over the last year or two. And if this isn't necessarily your jam, and maybe it's a little too aggressive, a little too whatever for you, they also have the Gent, which is a very similar knife in terms of specifications and size, but with a little more toned down appearance and just a little more gentlemanly. So uh, just check out Ferrum Forge if you're looking at something in that price range. This was a ridiculously good buy for me. And so, was this one. So there it is. That is the $500 Discord carry. This was a very fun video to do. I liked buying this stuff from you guys. I'm working with you in the Discord server to get the right stuff for the right price. I think it was a really cool experiment. I loved how it turned out. And uh, maybe I'll carry this gear. I, I know I'm carrying some of it because I really enjoy it. I'm, I'm definitely keeping the wallet. Like that is probably gonna be my everyday wallet that I rotate between with the, the Turkey Foot Leatherworks wallet. The only thing on this table that I don't necessarily think I'm gonna keep is the Orient because 
I really like the rest of this stuff a lot. And I think it's really good buys. I think it turned out great. If you wanna see me carry this stuff, specifically this carry, maybe we'll do another thing like I'm currently doing or about to start doing again with the $250 budget carry. Uh, that one, well, the pandemic happened, but we're, we're getting back on that train, I think, this week. Anyway, thank you guys for making this video possible. If you haven't joined the Discord server, be sure to do that. It's linked down below. Um, and if you want to support what I'm doing here, hit the links down below because that helps. Those are affiliate links. If you purchase anything using those links, I get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a win-win. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc, or you can go to Carry Commission where you can buy shirts and merch and gear directly from me. I'm trying to replenish it. Not a whole lot of gear there right now, but I'm working on it. I promise this whole pandemic has slowed pretty much everything down at all turns. So uh, hopefully I'll have stuff in there pretty soon. Be sure to follow us on the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at BestMEDC. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at CasperTech. And until next time, carry on.